Hey everybody, I'm going to be talking today about the sedimentological analyses that I've been working on with Dr. Francesco Berna and Dr. Hugo Cardoso. We're looking at the sediment samples from a site called Sekewa, also called Charlie Lake Cave. And what we're trying to do is expand the understanding of the paleo, -envir paleo environments that uh, were changing from the end of the Pleistocene to the uh, beginning of the Holocene. So, Charlie Lake Cave is located in the Peace River region, way up there. Uh, it is remarkably well preserved, it is remarkably well dated, and it is one of the oldest archaeological sites in BC, with cultural remains dating to about 12,500 BP. Um, the material there are mainly fluted points or paleo bison bones, but there's also a lot of microfauna and other interesting stuff near the bottom uh, at the time period that we're looking at. It's, uh, because of all that, we have an opportunity to look at the unbroken stratigraphy in the profile to see how the environment was changed since the site was originally occupied. The goals of the project I'm working on were, is going to be to use geoarchaeological techniques and spectra, uh, spectroscopy techniques uh, to identify the specific sources of sediments that appear at the site, to see how the deposition processes that buried the site change over time, and to see how both of those kind of work with the overall landscape. Charlie Lake Cave has been subject to a lot of studies that look at the faunal remains and the tools, but with the right materials, resources, and uh, methods, you can learn a lot just from the sediments. SFU has a very large collection of sediment samples from Charlie Lake Cave and from around the site, including a column sample that runs right through the entire depth of the gully, which is about four meters deep. The samples that my supervisors and I are interested in are near the bottom of the profile, uh, from around 12,500 to 9,000 BC, or BP. And uh, we're trying to compare the column samples with some samples from upslope in the site, which are some local silts that remain from where a glacial lake was uh, a few thousand years ago. And we want to see what sediment sources played a bigger part in burying the site during different periods of time. The two major sources being those glacial lake se sediments and the sandstone walls of the gully itself. Now, the main technique that I'm using for this study is Fourier Transfer in Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR. It's what uh, Candace is, was using for her analysis. It uses a machine that detects the material content of samples. It's very quick to perform, very easy, only in a small amount of sediment, as long as it's evenly distributed to get a representative sample of the whole. And after being pressed into a slide, the sample is run through a machine where an infrared beam irritates the molecular bonds of the minerals, measuring the energy that is emitted and absorbed, and displaying it as a wave number curve. I have just run the samples last week, so uh, we'll be interpreting them tomorrow. But with the help of my supervisors, I should be able to spot the peaks at certain wave numbers that represent specific minerals. For example, um, I don't remember the numbers themselves, but a certain peak at a certain wave number will represent uh, quartz, which is indicative of sand. So that's probably from the sandstone course, our source, but a sample that shows uh, the peaks for kaolinite will be more likely clay, which is more likely coming from the silt source. My hypothesis is that the wave number curve for the patch of, uh, for the lower areas of the, I'm sorry. My hypothesis is that the wave number curve for the bottom of the profile will match the samples from, from the, will match the samples from the glacial lake sediments. Whereas further up in the profile and further on in time, the, the samples will show less silt and a greater presence of sand in quartz, possibly because uh, the presence of, possibly because the deposition of quartz slowed down, I'm sorry, the deposition of silts slowed down as the landscape became more heavily forested and the kind of unstable area where the silts were coming down and flowing into the gully 
became stabilized through vegetation. The techniques empl employed in the study are well used and concerned with paleontology, paleobotany, archaeozoology, and can tell us why the site was used in the past and why it may have been abandoned. Thank you.